Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, we're perhaps more an omni-shamble than uh, <laughs> an ensemble, but we'll do our best. So, this is the Bring Your Own Device for Learning uh, coordination team, and um, we thought we'd share some of our experiences of running an open collaborative online event for staff development. And what we thought we'd do is take a bit more of a, an autoethnographic approach and just share some of our motivations and reasons for being involved and being continued to be involved in, in this event. I think for Neil, um, Alex and myself and Deb uh, as well for, you know, about f five years now, five years, five years we've, we've been doing it. So we just want to share with you a, a few of our findings and um, yeah, there may be juggling later as well. <laughs> So one of the things we wanted to talk about was um, using Chrissy's model, and obviously we have to give a big, out, big shout out to Chrissy and Sue Beckingham, who actually devised the original um, Bring Your Own Device for Learning, and David Hopkins as well. But this model that you can see from Chrissy is part of her PhD research. One of the things I think we found um, as a group working and running this event is that the group has become very, very important, and I think the support that we give to each other um, is really quite fundamental in the success of running the event itself. So I think for a week, we actually probably all live in that group. <laughs> it feels like that, certainly every night at 8 o'clock when the, the tweet chats start. Um, I'm not so sure we're down there about the high group, high group expectations, but I think we have, there are expectations and you know we want, we want the experience for everybody else that's participating in the event to be as um, positive and successful for them as possible. So there are some expectations on us. Um, and I think we get a lot of support from the group. We do synchronous and asynchronous uh, communication. So this, this model, I think we would like to take some more time to explore because it, it resonates with some of the things that we have just um, noticed and talked about anecdotally. So I just wanted to share a little bit of that. And that's something that we would like to follow up in more detail later. But I'm now going to pass on to Alex. Thank you. Um, I think that the theme of the, the, this week's conference is like community um, and it's community that's created um, Bring Your Own Devices for Learning, and it's community that keeps it together as well, because we do come together over five days, once a week, to look at these five Cs, the themes, and it was created, um, as was said, by Sue Beckingham and Chrissy Narancy. And it's been developed kind of like over a period of time. We haven't kind of like thrown the baby out with the bathwater. We've kind of recognised that they've created something quite special, something very useful, and something that is very engaging as well. Um, so what we've done is just, I guess, tinkered around with it at the edges. Um, so for example, this year, these were the original kind of like themes for each of the evening's tweet chats. We've just augmented them slightly um, to bring in, so like, I guess, I guess more critical kind of approach to each of those themes um, and extending them out and asking kind of the participants to think about um, how they use uh, social media and digital devices and bring their own devices in very different ways and to kind of like be more critical about what they do. Um, and I guess, <laughs> I guess also um, it, it allows us that kind of that playful element, you know, so as we're saying, we, we've been in this group for like five years now. We encourage each other to um, try new things out. Um, I'm a little bit of a curmudgeon, if I'm completely honest. So uh, having a bit moji uh, in f on screen in front of lots of people <laughs> kind of makes me feel a little bit like this. Um, but with the kind of like the support of the group, it's helped me kind of like try and understand these different types of technologies, because these are the kind of the types of technologies that students are using. They're communicating in these different ways, and while it's not always comfortable for us to kind of be. In these spaces, we sometimes feel a little bit of an imposter syndrome. Um, it's, I think it's important to recognise that there is that communication is going on in these spaces, and that's kind of really important. Um, I just one other thing to say, so just to kind of like talk about kind of like one of the motivations for me to kind of like be in this group continually um, is that it kind of works hand in hand with what I do in my current institution, that's the University of Liverpool. So during the week that we deliver these sessions online, a badge uh, CPD events around it. So we have a social media forum where we come together and talk about ideas, technologies, and approaches. 
Um, but at the same time, we also kind of teach academic staff to use Twitter in their teaching. Um, and that's kind of really important to have that dialogue between the face-to-face -face and online. So I think I'm probably talk too much, so I'm going to move over. Okay. Thanks, Alex. Uh, so Neil Whitton from the University of Salford. Um, and just looking back, 2014 seems such a long time ago. That was when the first iteration of Bring Your Own Device for Learning uh, first ran. Um, Sue and Chrissy uh, in the background were coordinating that, that week. Um, alongside Alex, I think there were 10 other facilitators. Um, and over the, the last six iterations, we've been the facilitation team. But I think the main message is um, you don't have to be special to be in that facilitation team. The facilitation team's changed. So it's very much community, which I think um, draws people back. Because I was thinking the other night, thinking, well, actually, I've, I've, I've been doing this for five years. Why do I keep coming back and keep coming back? Because every year's different. Um, and not only is it just that one week, um, it's an open course, that website's available all, all year round, so I can find myself dipping back in and out of it, um, reflecting back, back and forward. So I think the community actually makes it, um, and that, that for me is, is why I keep coming back. So it's, it's just after Christmas, it's January, it's, it's, it's dark nights, it's cold, but it's actually a really, really um, enthusiastic week. Um, it's a long week, but it's, it's really, really important to condense it to that week because we have, we have a conversation about whether we expand it over longer periods of time but actually just condensing it really really works and like I say you just keep finding yourself going back and back um, five years seems a long time but then again it doesn't um, I'm learning stuff every time I go in there um, which I think is um, a testament to the technology but also the community itself who are bringing new, new things in like the Bitmoji for example so um, I'll pa pass on to our next speaker Hi everybody, um, my name is Debbie Bath and I'm a senior academic developer Ooh. at Swansea. That's Sheila though, that's not me. Was <laughs> <laughs> I supposed to come in there? There yes. you go. Um, so uh, I just wanted to say, when I started uh, being involved with Bring Your Own Device for Learning, um, I was very much kind of on the periphery and I was quite new to it and it was quite a challenge to be able to jump in really and try and get involved. Um, look at me now. <laughs> um, and it, it is a case of constantly learning. There is so much that I've learned from it. Um, loads of different kind of tools that come out of it, but also actually it's a really good way to network with people. Can I just get a show of hands? It's, who's actually been involved with Bring Your Own Device for Learning this course? Have we only got one? Okay, all right then, next one. Anybody fancy having a go next time around? <laughs> Yay! Yay. <laughs> so, yeah, great. Honestly, I really would. If you want to check out the kind of things that we do, we can share some links with you later. Um, it's not just on Twitter, it's on Google Plus as well, all sorts of things. Um, and I would really encourage anybody to get involved, really, because there's a lot of opportunities that have come out of it. Things like this, working on cross-collaborative um, papers, and we hope to do some more research, which hopefully Sheila will tell you a bit more about in a second. Okay. <laughs> Well, I might not, but I might. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, the revelation for the team this year has been from Suzanne with Bitmojis. Who knew you could have so much fun? <laughs> just make it. So, um, I guess so, just to echo what Alex and, and Neil and Debbie have said, that I really enjoy getting involved in that week um, in January because it, it, you feel like you're part of a team, but it's an, an extended team. So it's not my everyday team at, at work, but it, you know, it's, I'm com com connecting with people across the country and internationally as well. I'm quite surprised about how many people get up in the middle of the night or early morning to take part in our tweet chats. And it seems to give a focus for people. And I think there's something about doing something quite openly. This is very much an open staff development um, opportunity. We Students can take part if they want. It tends to be more staff. Um, usually at my institution, I find that it's around about exam time, so it's a bit harder to get students involved anyway because they, they've got other things on their mind. But um, like Alex has said, I've been able to uh, do different things with Bring Your Own Device for Learning within my institutional context. I've run sessions around it. I've got people to talk about how they curate within the university. For example, we've been able to use the library and, and share some of the learning technologies that we've that people might not be uh, aware of that are new learning technologies so there's lots of things that we can do ar around about that as well with that week but I think again the other thing that I find very motivational is like Deb was saying you're always learning something 
But just being able to speak to other people, it's, it's kind of like a mini conference in a way, just actually having that space every night to have a focused tweet chat, even though it is very fast paced and it can be quite manic. Um, it's almost quite reassuring and there's something about the supportiveness and the collaboration of that open community that's incredibly motivating and inspirational. So I find that um, keeps me interested and, and, and makes me want to be part of and continue to be part of that community as well. But I'm going to pass over now to our newest member, Suzanne, who's going to take, because Suzanne, you, you were completely, you had never had anything to do with that and you just jumped in completely to it. So I'll just, uh, um, yeah. So I was invited to join Bring Your Own Device for Learning uh, from Alex. I had absolutely no idea what it was about and, and said yes to it uh, and jumped into it. So. Uh, immediately I was struck by imposter sy syndrome. I didn't know what was involved. I didn't know whether I had the skills or the capabilities to deal with the challenges that were involved in this week. Um, so certainly, but I, I went for it. And I think being part of Bring Your Own Device for Learning gives you that safety and opportunity to try new things in a supportive environment. One of those things was recording uh, an introductory video. All of the facilitators had to record an introductory video. Um, I did mine, obviously it was in the winter in Scotland. I started in daylight and I finished when it was dark. To be fair, it was winter in Scotland. There's not many hours of daylight anyway. But I literally did take 52 takes of this video uh, to get it right. Uh, I think after 24, I was quite happy. I sent it to Alex and said, what do you think? And he said, oh, well, you've done it in portrait. <laughs> We really want these things to be in landscape, so <laughs> 28 tries later uh, I had my, my video, but I guess just having that, uh, being able to, that confidence to know that you're in a supportive environment to, to try new things. And one of the, the galling things about this, and you'll see there's different times on the video, some of them were uh, two minutes, four seconds before I had to bin it, others uh, I fluffed up between one minute and 21 seconds, uh, but the end of it culminated in me juggling, so um, I was talking about having my, my working life, my home life, and this was the fragility in my imposter syndrome about what happens if, if things go wrong, uh, so the end of the video involved me juggling, so I'm going to give that uh, a bash now. I will admit that I have actually hard-boiled this egg. I didn't, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't do that at home, so this is me trying to juggle my work life. <laughs> so I'm just going to pass over to Alex now to talk about the opportunities that Bring Your Own Devices Learning has brought to, to all of us. And that egg came all the way from Scotland. It did. <laughs> <laughs> and it actually got mentioned on the Me Too yesterday. Does yeah. everyone, <laughs> everyone travel from Scotland with a hard-boiled egg? <laughs> no, no, that's true. It definitely doesn't. Um, I think, as, as we've said, it is kind of like a really kind of useful way of extending your personal learning network um, and actually finding support out there um, because there are lots of learning technologists, educational developers who are really keen to harness the technologies that we have within our institutions. And this is just one other way, um, which is very easy, supportive, friendly, um, and kind of like low risk way that you can get involved um, to kind of develop your skills in whatever kind of like technology that you're interested in. Um, so I think that's kind of really important. Um, it does force us to kind of try out new tools. Um, and at the last night I, I tried out Snapchat, which I'm almost ashamed to admit. Um, and you know, it was okay. Some of the photos were <laughs> horrific, uh, if I'm totally honest, but you know. Um, and again, this is another tool that kind of like the students that are coming into our institutions are using and communicating kind of like, you know, almost every single day. So we have to, at very least, understand some element of it. Um, and the fact that it's cross institutional collaboration as well, I think is really important. We're all working kind of like different parts of the universities that we work in. Um, and that just helps with that kind of like context setting where we are, the developments and changes, because what you tend to find is that universities, even though they've got different names and they're from the Russell Group or elsewhere, they tend to have the same kind of issues and same type of problems. So being that kind of like sharing community behind us is, is kind of really valuable uh, for me and, and everyone associated with it. And, and also it gives us the opportunity to kind of like come uh, and share the work that we do and, and I say work in the loosest sense, it is an incredible, not that bad. <laughs> I mean this in the sense that it's an it's incredible amount of fun working with these guys every January um, and, and just kind of like, it just makes that whole kind of experience of your kind of 
9 to 5 and beyond much more pleasurable. So thank you all for that. Um, I was forced to add this in last minute. Um, but it's not all about us. Um, we do need kind of new people, uh, as we've seen, fresh people to come in with new ideas and help develop and change this course. And, and that's what we've got. Um, and that's what we'd like you to be involved in. So get in touch with us. Speak to any of us at the conference over the next couple of days, if you're, if you're fortunate enough to be here for those three days. Um, or get in contact with us on Twitter. Um, all our handles are there. Um, and you can actually see a little bit more about the course from the link up there. And if you're looking for more references, there's a couple here. So thank you very much for that. answer it in, in the, especially the last part but there are a few people just sort of wondering what actually is it I it's mean, obviously great fun <laughs> I mean, um, I, I my actually, question is do you have a facebook page that's we, we do i think yeah. we did at yeah. one point um, um but yes google plus and twitter seem to be the, the spaces that people have gravitated towards um and yeah, Facebook doesn't seem so much, and I, I'm not sure of that. I think it kind of reflects certainly my, I think my relationship with with Twitter, uh, with Facebook. I think quite a lot of people now just want Facebook to be for family and friends and not for work stuff. So I think there was a bit of of, of that. Um, but um, so I think you know, thinking about new technology, Snapchat. I mean, one of the things that Suzanne did, as as well as just coming in to be a facilitator. Um, Suzanne shared how she had been using Snapchat with her students and you wrote a case study and you did a blog post so I think in a week there was a, a huge amount of digital capabilities that were kind of <laughs> wrapped up in that week so we, we are we you know that's the whole point of the week is to get people to talk about how they're using different technologies but if, if anyone wanted to be part of, of bring your own device for learning and wanted to set something up in Facebook absolutely fine you can go ahead and do that. We wouldn't. We wouldn't stop anyone doing that. We wouldn't stop so anyone doing anything. We encourage it. Yeah. It was just we found that people. It seems to be Google Plus and Twitter and the. Thing. And I suppose just to give us sort of an overview. So every week we have five days. So each day has a theme, as Alex said. And we have a blog post that will give you some suggested links, some things you might want to talk about. And then each night we have a, twi a tweet chat, usually from eight till nine. And that's has tended to be. I think in the last three years. That's where most activity takes place. There's, it's a huge amount. And people seem to, I don't know, because it's the dark nights or something, people have a <laughs> cup of tea and get on Twitter. And yeah, it's quite, quite cathartic. Quite often there's challenges within that tweet yeah, chat where yeah, people we have are using new tools. Yeah. Um, so has anybody else got any further questions on what it is, how to get involved? You don't have to be able to juggle, by the way. No, <laughs> we can't. <laughs> How, how, do you, how qualified do you have to be? Oh, to no, it just has to be, um, you not at all. I mean, if you want to be a, no, no, it's for anyone. I mean, basically, I mean, I don't know if any of us are qualified <laughs> to do anything. <laughs> to be a facilitator, the only thing we would ask is time, yeah. you know, because if you're kind of one of the facilitators, you have to do a bit more of the organisation, so there's a bit more involved in that, but not a huge amount because it's a team yeah. effort, and it, everything sort of works out naturally. If you want to be a participant, again, you know, there's absolutely no qualifications. And if you're curious about using social media, particularly in learning and teaching, taking part in a tweet chat is a great way to just experience it. You don't have to answer and you don't have, you, you can just watch. Um, so th the only qualification we'd ask is just a willingness to be part of something. You don't have to do the whole week. Either. No, you, you just dip, dip in, in and out. You know, it's one it's day or do an hour or so ten minutes. Yeah. Sorry, the question. Has the, has the group emerged from, from this idea of bringing your own device? We seem to talk quite a lot about um, just using tools for learning, using new tools for learning. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it started when it started. I think because. BYOD was kind of the thing probably five years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a big thing and it's just now we, we still use that. I think it's more kind of almost like a brand mm -hmm. but yeah, it, it's extended. It's less about your own device and it's more about the general use of um, technology and learning mm -hmm. I would say. So it, it's opened up but you know it still has that. We've got the hashtag and it's got that kind of identity but it, it's moved on. 
um, from that. So the original focus was very much kind of, I think that was probably when iPads came out. We, and more people would get that Christmas, everyone got an iPad, I think. Um, <laughs> but it's going to... We should have done that at the beginning. Yeah. 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 Note to possible, self. Possibly, <laughs> you need to rebrand it to sort of extend, yeah. extend its, um, its reach. Yeah. We po possibly. Yeah. Again, that's why we need new people and new new ideas. <laughs> Come along, volunteer. <laughs> that's that sounded like a volunteer to me. Yeah, it did. It did. So to give you an idea about, I mean, we have probably about, I think about five, a couple of hundred people mm. um, every night on the tweet chats. We, you know, I think over the week we get something, we certainly, you know, it's maybe like 10,000 tweets. It's, you know, it's, big, it's not as big as all in terms we've of Twitter. Twitter, we? Yeah, we did. We, we, yeah, we do. <laughs> I think every week. Every week. Every yeah, every year we break Twitter. Um, so <laughs> it, it is a great place to, to experiment if you haven't, particularly more of the social media type tools, if you haven't used them, it's a, it's a good place to actually, and it's quite short as well. It's just a week. And as Deb said, you don't have to do it all of the week. You can dip in and out. I think as well, with regards to using new tools as a community, you might um, communicate with someone who says, right, I'm going to try this tool, will you try it too? And therefore, you've mm -hmm. actually got that, that impetus to try something because someone else is, is relying on you to try it as well. So, yeah. And the, the conversation continues because on the way, I'm travelling on the train yesterday on the way down, Suzanne was doing a Snapchat tutorial for us in Snapchat <laughs> on the way. On the train. <laughs> so mobile. Snapchat is a tutorial tool with my students and I get really high levels of engagement. They don't engage on, on um, the forums in Moodle, but they, they're very much engaged in, in communicating on uh, Snapchat. Oh, when you get that, Jess. Anybody else got any last questions before we draw it to a close? So, um, since especially we've got five presenters here, it'd be very easy to uh, get hold of them in the break that we've got now downstairs. And so, uh, if you could all thank the presenters for a very interesting. Thank you. 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 Thank you.